Hi everyone, today I am coming to you guys with another tag video and as you can see from the title, it is 20 things you may not know about me tag. Some people do know these things, some people don't know these things. So I was going to do 25 things but I don't even think I know 25 things of myself. And I will share them with you. Number one, I learned English in 10 days. I was born and raised in Puerto Rico, Aguada, Puerto Rico. And I came here when I was, let's say I just turned eight, and I came straight to Connecticut. And that's where I am, Connecticut, uh, the eastern side. Um, and I remember going to school, and I went to school right away. The moment I came um, from Puerto Rico, I think within that week, I was already enrolled in school, and I started off in first grade. So I remember sitting in class, I was so confused, I was terrified, like I would shake and everything. I was a very nervous child, that's you know another thing about me. I was a very nervous child and very, um, what's it called? I was very aware of my surroundings, like if I didn't like something I would notice it right off the bat. I don't know, I was just like that. So I took in to learning English. I was counting from 1 to 100, actually I was counting from 1 to 10 by the end of my first day of school, so that was like day 3 of me being in Connecticut. <clears throat> excuse me by the end of the week I knew how my, all my ABC's and how to count from 1 to 100 and I knew basic words like um I need to go to the bathroom like you know things like that so I knew sentences and I think by the end of the month I was a pro I had this I had that in the back so I did learn English pretty much in less than 10 days but my first English word <clears throat> Maybe that should have been in the top, you know, 20 things about me. My first English word was, well, my first English phrase was, oh, shit. And I know, I know. And we were driving downtown um, Hartford in Connecticut, and I saw this really tall gold building. And if anyone is from Connecticut and you guys live in Hartford or you're very familiar with Hartford, you would know what that gold building was or is. It's still there. And I remember looking up and I said, oh, shit, my dad stopped the car so fast. Oh Lord, I thought I was going, I thought I was going to die. And I was only in the United States for like, or in Connecticut for like three hours so you know we kind of already set the stage of what my mouth was gonna be like at the age of 10 I gave CPR to one of my birds it was a parakeet and I found him dead and I gave him CPR <laughs> and I know that sounds kind of morbid but I freaked and like I saw him in the trash someone laid him in the trash they just threw his ass away and it was like my favorite color parakeet he was blue and green and I remember taking him, oh my god, it's so morbid. I remember taking him into my bedroom and I laid him out on the um, top of one of my shoe boxes. And I remember giving him CPR. I do not know how I knew CPR. I did not do mouth to mouth. But I did open his beak and I like pressed on his chest. It was the weirdest thing because to this day I do not know how I knew about CPR. I don't think it was ever spoken of. I don't think I've ever seen it on TV at the time. <clears throat> now you see it you know everywhere but it was the weirdest thing you know it was kind of morbid but I still remember that and I was so hysterical I was crying and then my mom goes she's like so what I threw him out I go you heartless you know <laughs> the words that were in my head didn't come out of my mouth but yeah my bird died and I tried to revive it so I don't know. the third thing about me that you may or may not know probably not is that I have never been able to do a pull-up ever 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 and obviously now I will never be able to do a pull-up because I am too big to pull up all this weight and have you seen these wrists they're very small I might break something okay number four my lifelong dream like up until I was like maybe 14 15 was to dance and be a cheerleader like all I wanted to do was be a cheerleader and then become a dancer of some sort probably not on the pole but I wanted to be a dancer I just wanted to dance I just frolicked around the house like I was one of the like fly girls and stuff from a living color in case you don't know where that is and I just love dancing I love cheerleading I was always mimicking videos all that stuff so now I kind of want to be like a makeup artist and you know and get into something science wise uh, or math. I want to be the jack of all trades I don't know I just like so many things and I can soak up all that info anyway number five I like stuffed monkeys like I really 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 like like 
stuffed monkeys really it's an obsession like I think everything like if I was able to buy everything I saw that had a little stuffed monkey or like like a baby blanket with a little monkey thing on it I like I would have it I would have it you don't believe me hold on meet Bobby Jack he sits right in front of our bed and it's kind of creepy but he's like just so cute look how big he is look at his ears oh my god look at his belly i mean i just love bobby jack he's like my favorite and i got it for my niece and she didn't really care too much for it so then i ended up lou i love my pit bulls too but um he sits in front of our bed i gave it to my niece and um <laughs> and she kind of really didn't care too much for it. like she kept tossing him to the side and i kept stealing him from her and she didn't care so guess who has bobby jack number six i do well in emergency situations i've always had this knack i don't know why in my head i am freaking out and screaming like ah, like literally in my head that's how i see things but for some reason i do really well in emergency situations my dad had a stroke and he collapsed in front of me I don't remember but he did when he got out of his coma he reminded me of what I did for him so apparently I was already on the phone within two seconds and had his head under a pillow and had him laying on his side in case he would vomit or anything and I just kept talking to him I don't know that's what he said um, my mom did confirm that but what I don't know maybe it's just me maybe it's in my head but whatever I have TMJ which is this is number seven it's a jaw disorder <laughs> I can pronounce it it just takes me a minute um some people may have that um i have a tendency to clench my jaw when i am tense when there's stress levels and apparently i hit a really bad bout of stress a couple years ago and anxiety that it was so bad that i cracked my teeth in the back and i exposed some nerves and it was from grinding and it was just a whole bunch of stuff happening not that it's still not happening it's just never ending i do have flare-ups still every now and again where all of a sudden i could just be sitting there and just the jaw just starts throbbing and i actually get swelling like on my face from just grinding and i don't realize that i'm grinding um it usually happens at night when i'm resting number eight my youngest memory of anything was from the age of two i remember that clear as day it is not a very good memory so i will not well on that right now i will not discuss that but that is my youngest memory i know i feel like i'm sitting in a psychiatric office just laying in that chair like my youngest memory it is um it's quite a few memories from when i was two <clears throat> i think even younger because i remember i was weaned off diapers when i was like one one and a half so there's some memories of where I was still wearing a diaper. To me, that's very young to remember something, but I've always been a little extra. Anyway, that was weird. Nine, I've been obsessed with makeup since I was little. And <clears throat> actually that kind of goes back to my youngest memory. I was probably a little younger than two, and I remember going into my mom's drawers and <clears throat> I pulled them open and I remember seeing what i know now to be nail polish and she had this drawer that maybe was like this deep in my head it was like this deep and it had rows i mean it was beautifully stacked and just lined up with nail polish and another drawer i would assume are eyeshadows because i remember rubbing them on my hands and rubbing them on the pillow and getting in trouble for it like really bad trouble i found out that my mom was a makeup artist so i just was always obsessed with looking at her pictures of her um putting full-on face makeup on someone or making them look like a zebra or a tiger or whatever like i remember that memory very well and i remember i was like i want some of whatever that is and i just wanted to touch it i also remember uh when my cousin used to live with us haiti um she used to always do her makeup like it was her thing and like i just watched like like that that's that's a, that's exactly how i looked watching her i would watch her from the mirror and stand there and you know what's funny is that when i went back to puerto rico in 2008 after so many years um i stayed with her for a couple of nights and as she was doing her makeup i caught myself doing the same exact thing and just staring at her do her makeup it it's so weird but I've always loved makeup. I've just always been intimidated by it because I did not think it would look right on me. And now that I'm ready, I'm so ready. I'm so doing this. So yes, uh, makeup, love it, love it.
can you tell I love it number 10 I'm only halfway there sorry guys I <laughs> um, I was bullied from kindergarten until seventh grade so I know that's not a very good thing but it's kind of molded me to who I am today um after seventh grade I kind of fought back so I, I hope I wasn't a bully ever but I kind of had no tolerance for bullshit I really just didn't um I never did in my head I was just always like you know this is wrong you know I just can't be around these people and that's kind of probably why I got bullied a lot because I distanced myself from a lot of people which I still do that till this day like I have no qualms about being like it's all right boo I don't need you in my life go ahead bye bye you know like I really don't have any any hesitation to do that at all and I was always like that I was just very quiet so I know it's hard to believe that I was very quiet people that have just known me for the last maybe 10 years would not believe that I was very quiet but I am I was very shy I was very quiet and I was very cautious super super cautious and with reason for those of you that know my past so number 11 I'm so sorry I was secretly boxing for like two years, like two years before I met my husband, I, or up to, um, I ended up just going to this gym and the older man there was, you know, teaching boxing and there was like another guy there that was teaching boxing and they kind of like took pity on me or whatever and they kind of took me under their wing and I got to box, I mean I got to wail on big people, yeah. I got to let out a lot of aggression I really think that's a great sport and it's it's an amazing boxing was my go-to and it was something that I watched with my dad as a pastime and it was something that always intrigued me so like I said I'm kind of like the jack of all trades I kind of want to be the jack of all trades but I did box for two years and then I just stopped going they closed down anyway shortly after um, but they were awesome people and I'm just super grateful that I got to experience that and practice no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Number 12. I'm kind of a science slash astrology geek. Like, I'm super dork, like, when it comes to science stuff. Like, I'm all for reading. I'm all for, like, soaking up knowledge. When the show The Big Bang Theory came out, it was like my inner geek came out, and I was super excited. And I understand most of what they say. I obviously am not up to par with some of the stuff they say, but... I just uh, just I don't know I don't know I guess we'll leave that up to your thoughts I don't know and I've always loved the sky astrology stars moons uh, planets I've just always been into that stuff okay this is really morbid and it might be morbid to some of you guys but it's just who I am and those really close to me know exactly those who are really close to me aren't affected by this very much but unfortunately it's part of me it's kind of a weird thing of me it might be morbid to some of you guys but hey someone's got to do it i this is number 13 oh bad number um i actually enjoy doing post-mortem care i know that <laughs> yeah i know that might sound ooh, to some of you guys but i have always been at peace doing post-mortem care i don't know if you guys I don't know get what I'm trying to say I thought it would be hard doing a family member but I don't think it was like even when my father passed and I saw him I was cleaning his face and cleaning his mouth and I don't want to cry so we're gonna stop there so I like postmortem care it's weird isn't it I believe number 14 <laughs> I don't know I've always had this knack or I don't know in my head I guess I believe it that I have a keen sense of knowing someone's personality even before speaking to them so I walk in a room and I may not know you from home to wall you might have just looked at me and automatically I have like just a sense of what your personality will be like and most of the times I don't even I don't know if I've been wrong I can't think of an instance where I have been off per se but obviously when you talk to someone you get to know them a lot better so that's even more you know for me but right away I can kind of tell someone's personality I can kind of tell if I can approach them how can I approach them and stuff like that um so I don't know that's kind of a weird thing but I've always felt that 
I and that may be part of my cautiousness because automatically my radar goes up so it's the weirdest thing okay anyway number 15 I curse like a ship full of sailors and whoever did not know that where have you been um yes I in my head when I was little I would just curse a lot and I don't know where I got that colorful language from because most of it was English curse words and not Spanish curse words but some of them were mixed in there and I've just uh do, 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 I just kind of curse it just comes out I, I can go in I'm very creative with my curse words sometimes let me know if you disagree. Um, number 16, I love pit bulls. I love that kind of breed. Um, I love uh, American Staffordshire Terriers. I love American Pit Bull Terriers. I love the Terrier breed. And I feel like they're very misunderstood. And apparently, um, I don't know if I always had that knack. I've seen these dogs when I was younger and I was just automatically attracted to them. I didn't know what breed they were until I got older and I have two of my own. And I have um, picked up some strays from the street and found them homes and I don't know, it's just something I like doing. So I really do advocate for that breed. I think they're very misunderstood. Not everyone can own or have that kind of dog. It's just, and just like not everyone can have a Chihuahua because those things, not for me, I'm gonna tell you that much. Um, but I love all animals, but I especially warm up to those big glutes, those medium-sized glutes, uh, pit bulls or American Staffordshire Terriers, whatever. Um, I also love Dobermans. I think they're just cute. I don't know. That's, I mean, I don't know if that's new to anyone because I have a pit bull advocate page where I just sh share a little bit across hospital. Am I speaking English to you guys? Can you guys let me down? You know, let me know down below. Am I speaking good English? I mean, I don't. Even, I do cross post a lot of rescues or when they need adoptions and stuff because I feel like that's a big aspect in helping these animals get rescued. Any kind of animal, but mostly pit bulls. And of course, my dogs are in there. So I do have a page on Facebook that advocates for all animals, but mostly pit bulls. So it's called "Ban Ignorant People to Help Protect Our Pit Bulls," because I think ignorance is what causes 99% of all the crap that goes around this world. So that's just my opinion, okay? Number 17, I have really active daydreams and visuals. Like, I think that morbid stuff. I should add in there like number 21, I'm an extremely morbid person. I get these visuals, I don't know, it's just weird. I don't know, I'm like Miss Cleo, <laughs> except not fake. I think I'm done with that, okay. Next, I have a sick sense of humor, very sick goes into the morbid part so those of you that know me I can take a sick joke um in my you know I I don't know I know how to set boundaries and be like okay that was a little too far but I got it you know type thing but yes I have a very sick sense of humor um I can read really fast that's number 19 I can read fast probably not aloud <laughs> out loud but I can read really fast um I'm bored at school, so I, that's why I don't go back to school very easily, but I can read something from the textbook really quickly and soak in whatever was was read. Number 20, I have contemplated on going back to school, but going to med school to maybe become a medical examiner. So that's something that I thought about when I was way younger, which is funny because I never knew I was going to be in the medical field and what I'm thinking about recently so it's kind of funny that it pops up in my head every five years or so so I don't know I just don't know I don't know I don't know I don't know <laughs> um yes yeah, so that's something I'm contemplating and this video has gone on long enough so those are 20 things that you may or may not know about me and most of them are just absolutely weird so um i would understand if you thought that i needed to be institutionalized but i thank you guys for watching please let me know what you thought of uh, this thing that i just did i don't know and feel free to tag yourselves and i thank you guys for watching please don't forget to subscribe bye